From humble beginnings come great things, and like the brightest of stars, it too began with a single spark. Founded over a century ago by Irishman Frank Duff, the Legion of Mary first found its roots in the heart of Dublin, Ireland. Initiated in a humble building in an old and poor quarter of the city of Dublin, Ireland, with the honest motive of rehabilitating the outcasts of the surrounding society, with the guidance of Mother Mary, the Legion of Mary cared for those shunned by others, a virtue reminiscent of Jesus Christ himself. A simple altar, a steady faith and a stirring book soon helped and inspired Frank Duff and his followers to realize their true mission, the journey to Jesus through Mary. Slowly at first, but with leaps and bounds thereafter, the Legion of Mary began to spread across the world, raising people in spirit and strength. And so, an army was born, an army under the patronage of Mary, their Queen, with a simple wish to please God and make him loved in his world. An army that would wage a spiritual warfare and battle against the forces of darkness and sin with faith and prayer. Today, it stands proud yet humble, tried and triumphant and firm in faith, all because of one man's love for his people and for Mary. Ireland suffered a difficult time during the 1910s, meaning Frank Duff grew up seeing the difficulties and hardships of the people around him. This inspired him to help them by joining the Centuries and Equal Society. While working in the SVP, he saw the suffering and destitution of the people the first time, especially the spiritual destitution of the time. One particular day, while on a mission for the SVP, he came across the biggest red light district in Europe at that time. Monta, full of drunkards, prostitutes and others cast aside by society. There he met a group of women. Frank was saddened by their plight and invited a local priest to speak with them. Together with the priest, they set off to find a quieter place have a meaningful chat to change their ways and reform. After great difficulty, Frank finds a little convert in Bali, where the local nuns and priests help him change the lives of these unfortunates for the better. After this, circumstances change pretty fast. Frank buys a building, furnishes it, and creates a safe haven for these newly changed women, the Santa Maria Hotel for prostitutes. The crowning moment of this story The table around which they met bore a simple altar, 
of which the center was a statue of the Immaculate Conception. It crystallized everything for which the Legion of Mary stands. The first corporate act of those legionaries was to go on their knees. Their heads bent down, the invocation and prayer of the Holy Spirit were said. And then through the fingers slipped the beads of the simplest of all devotions. Under the auspices of Mary, they set themselves to consideration of how they could best please God and make Him loved in His world. From that discussion came forth the Legion of Mary, as it is today in all its features. The newly formed association for the first four years of its existence was known as the Association of Our Lady of Mercy. Only in November 1925 was the name changed to the Legion of Mary. Frank Duff subsequently laid down the system of the Legion in the handbook in 1928. Growth came slowly to the Legion of Mary. Five years after its foundation, it was still confined to the limits of Dublin. With the advent of 1928, however, the organization began to spread throughout the world, slowly at first and then with leaps and bounds. In 1928, the Legion crossed the seas and took root in Scotland, and in 1929, it was established in England. In 1931, the Legion made a start in India. The same year saw its beginning in New Mexico, America. Crossing the border thereon into Canada, the year saw the Legion introduced to South America by Alfie Lamb and to Africa in 1933 by Eagle Green. Their missionary zeal igniting the rapid spread of the Legion. It was carried across to Australia in 1932 by Father Henry Baker, and in 1937, the Legion spread across Asia through the introduction of the Legion of Mary by Father Aidan McGrath. By 1930s, the Legion had already spread to the four corners of the earth. Among the many persons who worked tirelessly to spread the Legion, two individuals stand out, Alphonsus Lamb and Adele Quinn. Alpha Lamb. Fondo known as El Corderito, meaning the little lamb, was a passionate man who tirelessly worked to spread the Legion of Mary for the love and devotion he had for Our Lady. Although his delicate health prevented him from following his desire of a religious vocation, he found his calling in the Legion. Appointed Legion envoy to South America at just 21 years of age, Alfie was by the Concilium in the year 1953 to develop the Legion through the South American countries. For almost six years, he worked ceaselessly in promoting the Legion of Mary in Colombia, Ecuador, Chile, Bolivia, Peru, Paraguay, Uruguay, Brazil, and Argentina. During his years in South America, he set up a great number of branches of the Legion and trained a multitude in the apostolate of the Legion. He also instilled the code of conduct and mindset of a legionary with his words, living the legion. But he didn't limit himself to setting up groups of the legion, but rather he did much more because of his burning zeal for souls. And in spite of all Alfie achieved in setting up new branches of the legion, he remained humble, with the legion's founder, Frank Duff, stating that modesty shone out of him. His profound work for Mary and her legion made him known as the greatest envoy of the legion. Like Alfie, Edel's life was one full of struggle and heroic perseverance, short lives devoted entirely to the legion and devotion to Mary, suffering from ill health and encountering multiple obstacles, all borne joyfully. The cross of life was a constant and recurring part of Edel's short life, but she was like a sunbeam, shining on everyone whom she encountered. She kept the thorns of life for herself, the flower and fragrance she gave to others. She accepted God's will and gave her life for His service in Africa. At the age of 25, she was diagnosed with tuberculosis and the doctors gave her two years to live. However, this did not deter her and she dedicated herself wholeheartedly 
heart, body and soul to spread the legion. Appointed legion envoy to Africa in 1936, she arrived in Nairobi, the capital of Kenya, and made it the base of her missionary work. The last seven years of her short life saw the establishment of hundreds of branches of the legion across the African continent. In Kenya, Malawi, Zimbabwe, Uganda, Tanzania, and South Africa. She traveled to all these countries in spite of her illness and frailty. It was unheard of, a young woman traveling the roads of Africa. Where other missionaries had failed in Africa, she succeeded. A sickly young woman, yet a valiant legionary. When others faltered or hesitated, her invariable response was, Why can't we trust Our Lady? Our Lady will see after things. An untold story in the history of the legion is its perseverance in China. Communism was spreading across the world after the Second World War. And having seen the Legion's success in Africa, Archbishop Antonio Ripieri, Papal Nuncio to China, sought to spread the Legion in China to ensure that the faith would hold fast after the communist occupation. It was not long before the Legion became a major threat to the communists in their revolutionary takeover of China during the 1950s. The National Newspaper of China, The People's Daily, published a front page article titled Legion of Mary, Public Enemy Number One. The Legion was vilified and suppressed by the authorities, and legionaries were ordered to register their names with the police, which also meant admitting to the false charges brought against the Legion and removed the member's name from the ranks of Mary's army. The legionaries, as a body, refused to give up their membership. This refusal of legionaries to register led to the arrest of thousands. If not for these three individuals, Frank Duff, known by some as the Irishman of the century, Alfie Lambay and Adair Quinn, two of the greatest missionaries of the legion, and countless other legionaries who held firm and persevered amidst times of struggle, persecution, and difficulties, the legion would not be what it is today, an army that encircles the whole world, dedicated finally to the good fight of the faith. The Legion of Mary, with its expansionist program, came to Sri Lanka in 1935 under the guidance of Right Reverend Dr. G. A. Gayot OMI, the Bishop of Jaffna, was impressed with the Legion's work in the cross. The introduction of the Legion to Jaffna is created by Father J. K. Rajanayan OMI, the parish priest of St. Anne's Church, Jaffna, where the first presidium was established, and thereafter in the parish of Korte by Father Z. Gabriela and Philip Mary's Church, Heta, by Father A. Brent. This marked the inception of the Legion of Mary's presence and expansion in Sri Lanka. It lost no time in spreading all over the country and it reached the faithful in all three languages, Sinhala, Tamil and English. It moved into the diocese, parishes and schools with a dedicated mission to connect with the people, sustain their faith and support the church in all missionary activities. Tradition has it that the late Reverend Father Peter Pillay, the renowned rector of St. Joseph's College, Columbton, had met the founder of the Legion in Rome, the late Frank Duff, who had given him a copy of the Legion Bible, the Legion Handbook. Beginning with just 15 individuals and the blessings of their queen and mother, the Legion of Mary has now been the largest Catholic organization in the world. It all started with this man amidst poverty and harsh social conditions founded an army, an army to fight against the darkness and the sins of this world. Irrespective of age, skin color, race, class or gender, the Legion stands as a universal army of light bearers bonded together in prayer and spirit and their love for Mary. Through our work, a legionary learns to value humanity, regardless of rats or riches. 
health in self, society and soul, happiness that is gained from selfless love, and finally humility. For what are we, if not imperfect?